Welcome back, everybody. I, as getting ready for all of these interviews, I go through the background of the actor or actress that comes on. And I started noticing that in reality, even though I'm the one that's inviting uh, people to come onto my show, it's the universe that does all of the talking and thinking anyway. Because as I started doing more research on Natalie, the more I started listening to her talk, the more I saw what she puts onto her profile uh, on her social media, the more I understood that, yes, acting is one of the reasons why she's coming on, but really it's much beyond that. And it's about meditation. It's about universe. It's about manifestation. It's about all the things that I'm passionate about and have been for all of my life. So I am really excited. And as a matter of fact, I, you know, as soon as we're done with our interview, I'm going to go back to her Instagram live that she was holding with uh, uh, Emily, Emily, Emily Fletcher. Fletcher. Uh, cause I had a chance to catch only a part of it and I want to listen to the whole thing. So I'm going to go back and rewatch that and we're going to post uh, a link to it here. Please go check it out. So welcome to the show and uh, I'll hold my excitement for a moment. Natalie Crow. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Likewise. Uh, it's, it's fascinating that, um, all of the people that come into our lives come into our lives for a certain reason. And, uh, you know, that reason could be per perceived as positive or negative in that moment. But all of the people come in and out of our lives for a very specific reason. Mm -hmm. And I know that it feels to me as soon as I started doing kind of that background that this particular conversation is, again, meant for a very specific reason at this point in my life that gets me more in balance and gets me more back on track to my true essence, which is somebody who is, you know, deeply spiritual and somebody who is trying to get back to meditation and is trying to get back to the manifestive uh, ways that I grew up doing uh, for most of my life until I kept on hitting blocks. And we'll talk about all of that stuff. So thank you for coming. Universe, thank you for sending uh, Natalie here. Um, it's life is beautiful. That's it. <laughs> I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's interesting because I know, you know, a lot of people are going to be uh, kind of tuning in and they're going to be wanting us to talk about Winona Earp and they're going to want it, uh, us to talk about some of your other projects and we'll definitely mention them, but that's not why I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> because I want to get to know you as a person and you know your profession as an actress and your ambitions as one what drives them because my spirituality and my belief system drives what it is that i do i want to know how it drives what you do and that is more important to me as this show hmm. that's a really great jumping off point i yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I think my reasons for being an actor maybe are different than a lot of people. I've always felt um, it's been a spiritual journey for me being an actor mm -hmm. and the craft of acting. Um, you know, in the beginning when I started out, um, I think it was just a curiosity about human nature and different types of people i've always been really interested in psychology um so for me that was a the starting point but as i started to get deeper into the craft of acting i think it became more spiritual for me as every class i took every um audition i did every character i took on i seeing if I can put this into words properly, but, you know, it opened up a different part of myself. It, it allowed me to explore different parts of myself that, you know, maybe are in this lifetime, another lifetime. Um, and so every character that I work on, I feel like it serves my growth mm -hmm. as a person here on earth. So... Yeah, now I'm at the point where it's really about continuing that journey, but also telling stories that are meaningful to me, which I think a lot of actors want to do. That's, you know, the dream is to really care about the work that you're involved in. Um, 
but on a spiritual level, you know, roles that I feel tell, share messages and tell stories about what I'm connected to, like spirituality and that, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if saying, are you worried about this would be a right way of phrasing it, but in terms of spirituality, in terms of growth in terms of human development uh if we as actors and you're much more into it than i am who by the way just a few minutes ago let go of my agent because i want to focus more on the show and other aspects of my life um but which is is a, is a part of the letting go process and, and kind of my realigning into true self but mm. as as an actress um who you know wants to continue doing interesting roles do you fear um uh, your interesting word right do you fear that you're limiting the number of projects that you can actually be attached to where you feel drawn and you feel that are at the right vibrational level as opposed to doing what you were doing before which is hey this project gives me an opportunity to explore uh, and maybe process and let go of certain parts of myself or experience parts that i feel that are more you know past life uh things and traumas that i need to uh go through so that will open up every opportunity trying to uh try to be you know at the higher level of frequency that can be you know a lot for your projects do you do you ever think of it from that perspective um i haven't really <laughs> i i think i'm i'm okay with there being fewer and more meaningful projects to be a part of. I, I think too, you know, you're speaking about alignment and being in our truth and mm -hmm. our true essence. And I, I, I really do believe that when you are in that place, what comes to you is meant for you. So I don't, I don't have any fear about what yeah. projects will come my way and kind of, even with auditions, I mean, I'll I'll audition for anything because I, I like to do comedy as well. You know, some stuff I don't, I pass on, but um, for the most part, I have a pretty open mind and just kind of believe that what is meant to be mine will, you know, that's will come to fruition. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good way of of looking at it. And again, as as I'm hearing myself talk right now. Uh, me, the the spiritual teacher and the person who, uh, from a higher plane, uh, if you will, and I am saying that, okay, settle down, boy. These are not things that you really uh, have fully processed because mm -hmm. universe does bring into alignment whatever is right for you at that moment. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be uh, a movie like What Dreams May Come, uh, which, you know, one of my favorites uh, that deals with spirituality. It doesn't have to be um got another movie that just uh oh uh the celestine prophecy mm -hmm. right the movie for celestine prophecy it doesn't have to be that that you know no. it's kind of the spiritual spectrum to be spiritual and to be enlightening and to be in that vibrational frequency mm -hmm. yeah lessons are sometimes in the simplest places <laughs> yeah absolutely um mm -hmm. it's it's really interesting and kind of uh going back you know um because i've i'm I'm not familiar with your work from the places where m people are familiar from your work. I mm -hmm. have not watched Winona uh, Arp. Uh, so I am very sorry to everybody who's watching. Uh, <laughs> incredible uh, you know, uh, following on it. Um, but I'm not familiar with you from there. Um, I'm familiar with you from, uh, from different kind of uh, bit parts that you've done. Suits is one of my favorite all time shows. So I remember you as you know, Hardman's uh, daughter, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I remember you from kind of these, you know, small places that I caught you in. And I thought that you've been in enough of those where it was interesting to talk to you about it. And mm. again, the idea was to talk about acting and then it evolved from there. Mm. Um, but looking kind of at the totality of your experience and where you started, there are a lot of very interesting uh, parts that allowed you to get to where you are right now mm -hmm. and your understanding of self and mm. your growth and evolution as a being and 
I want to touch upon those just from that perspective. You know, uh, from my understanding, please correct me if any of this is wrong, but you uh, you started dancing um, and dancing is what uh, drew you into this world. So I have an idea now kind of hearing you talk and listening and seeing some of the things that you've mentioned online. I have an idea of why dancing uh, was uh, was that part of the expression. What was it for you? Uh, you know, I used to, this is, this is the backstory with dance. I, okay. when I was very little, before I started lessons, I would dance in the living room and my mom would always say, you know, just, she, lo she loved that I would dance and she would say, just feel the music. And I really took that to heart. I would really like, the, it was like the music got inside of me. Like I almost, you know, became like a like channeling the music and so she she put me in dance lessons and it it just it very quickly became um like an energy it was like an energetic cleanse for me dancing it was it was everything for the you know the 12 13 years that i was dancing very um seriously as mm -hmm. a kid and a teenager and it really was it was my outlet. It was where I expressed everything. It was, I felt the most me. It was, it was, I was definitely meant to be a dancer 100%. So, and, and it, and it was also like the portrayal of the music, you know, it was the expression through the music and it was like storytelling in a way. It was, you know, physical storytelling. Um, I, my daughter is a dancer. Uh, my son is a dancer. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I used to do ballroom dancing when I was, uh, when I was growing up. Um, my kids went, you know, more, uh, more your route in terms of, um, uh, ballet and, uh, jazz and contemporary and, you know, all the other, uh, kind of uh, elements of it. But you, you've spent quite a bit of time on, uh, in ballet, um, mm -hmm. which for, again, kind of, my own uh, my own perspective uh, looking from a side but as a person who's channeling and who wants to express through the movement uh, of her body and want to be in the flow of it then you get put into ballet which ballet is flowing but ballet is rigid ballet mm -hmm. is structured. ballet is precision ballet is mm -hmm. certain types of music and i would think that you know, for somebody based on, again, what I hear, which could be inaccurate, but I thought more contemporary uh, would be a, a more interesting kind of uh, approach and an outlet for you uh, just to be one with the music and express yourself that way. I did, I did do more contemporary. I was, I was very serious about ballet up until the age of about 15. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be a ballerina. But then I think, you know, just the way you're developing at that age, I wanted, I wanted to break free and wanted more art, artistic expression. So I did go more into like modern and contemporary dance. And, and then through my 20s, I was much more into contemporary and that type of abstract movement, for sure. Yeah. It, again, it just makes sense to me <laughs> naturally yeah. where the question will go. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, going through the teenage years, um, you know, I think hip hop is a great, uh, great place because hip hop allows you, it's it's a very different vibration. It's a very different energy, mm -hmm. but it allows you to uh, cleanse yourself in a way, mm -hmm. uh, move that to ground yourself and have that, um, you know, people box uh, in order to get the energy out. Hip hop is a way of getting the energy out. So that's you know my son is uh, doing a lot of hip-hop right now and it's good he's about to turn 11 there's a lot of energy that needs to be expressed uh, so mm -hmm. this is a positive way of doing so um my daughter i yeah i think my daughter is doing kind of a combination of things uh mm -hmm. no longer ballet she tried ballroom but she's she's much more i think jazz uh mm -hmm. and musical theater is kind of more her style and i love musical theater i know you do as well yes so, yeah uh, oh, that's great yeah it it kind of brings us to uh to moscow um 
Mm-hmm. I, I find it again interesting for you know uh, a girl who grew up uh, dreaming of being a ballerina and then getting an opportunity to go to Moscow and do 42nd Street. So mm-hmm. it's that combination of Western and in in East, uh, if you will. Yeah. And um, tell us more about it because again there are other aspects of it that I find fascinating. Mm. Moscow was life altering really i it was my first professional job uh, other than i mean i had cheerleaded for the blue jays and some sports teams but Yay. really yeah yeah so this was my it was my first professional job and moscow uh i mean my my heritage is um scandinavian and eastern european and so i always you know, read about Russia and felt a connection to that part of the world. Mm -hmm. And then also my stepdad, he had worked there in in Russia for quite a few years um, in the oil fields there. So I had uh, tons of Russian like matryoshka dolls and all these Mm -hmm. little things from Russia in my house and in my room. And so it was very serendipitous in a way to then be going to Russia. It seemed meant to be, to be going. And yeah, it was, everything about it was charmed, but also challenging. And it was, you know, I was young. I was, I was 19, I think when I went there and I was just having the time of my life. <laughs> I was having the time of my life. I I loved the people. I loved the adventure of it all. You know, it was, and the musical was great as well, but it was really secondary to the life experience I was having just being in, in Moscow. Uh, as a parent and as somebody who, you know, comes not from Moscow, although I've been there, I, I come from the Eastern part of Ukraine. Um, <clears throat> So I left when I was 14 years old. If Mm. my kids um, had told me, hey, I want to go to Moscow and do a musical, the answer would be 99% no. Um, (laughs) Knowing knowing kind of the the culture and everything that happens there, I Mm. would not be uh, okay with that. So the Mm. fact that your parents actually let you go is, is, I have great respect and admiration for them doing so. But following up with that, the reason why this show ended is because the, you kept on getting bomb threats. Yeah. So as, as a parent, uh, I'm just imagining myself as a parent of, uh, of a 19 year old daughter who I let go to Moscow to pursue her dreams. And now she's getting bomb threats in the theater. I, which, which plane were your parents on and how quickly did they get there? You know, I, I think like it's, it's quite a while ago. So I, yeah. I'm sure my mom was probably nervous. I'm sure she was, but my stepfather was, he really instilled a lot of courage and power in me. He was very empowering. He, you know, there was nothing to him that I couldn't do. So if I ever came to him with any fears, because there was a moment when we were in Moscow where I was very, nervous about being there because we it was a year after 9-11 had happened Mm -hmm. and we were so and two-thirds of our our company was american so they had experienced firsthand you know the tragedy of 9-11 in new york and so we were there for not very long and there were you know, there was a lot of hostility between Russia and Chechnya. So there was bombings happening all over Moscow at various times. It was not, it was not safe. Like there, there was a lot of things about it that were red flags. Um, so 13 people from our company left. They pulled the plug and they were like, you know, no, I'm going back to the States or back to Canada. And so after those people left, I had a moment where I thought, oh, maybe I should be scared. Maybe I should go home. And I called my parents and I had this talk with with them. And my stepdad was just like, never panic in the face of, the, of disaster. He said, like, are, are you safe? 
I said, yeah, I'm safe. I'm, you know, haven't been threatened personally. I'm, and he just encouraged me to, to stay and to be strong. And, and I'm so grateful for it because Emily and I both stayed mm -hmm. and I, I think it, you know, contributed a lot to our growth and life experience. So <laughs> it's as I, I, I know myself that if I were in your shoes, I would have wanted to stay. Uh, mm -hmm. But looking at it from the perspective of a parent, I'm yeah. not sure that it would have been strong enough as your stepdad to let you stay <laughs> and, yeah. not, and not to go there uh, and, and try to pull the plug myself. Yeah. Uh, it's again one of those interesting things. God, you know, thank God that you're okay, and you know, it didn't. Yeah. Uh, nothing bad transpired, but yeah, uh, a, a very interesting life experience. Um, it was. And, then, and then you came back uh, and you started uh, you started working in uh, in cinema. Um, what was the the first project that you did, you know, back in Canada that made you think, okay? this really is my path and I'm going to be on it. Hmm. Uh, that's a great question. I would say it's probably, um, it wasn't too, it was maybe a couple years after Moscow, two, three years after I came back. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, you know, there was yeah. a lot of, uh, struggle and a lot of figuring things out and um but then i i booked a lead role in a tv series it was a canadian tv series called mvp the mm -hmm. secret lives of hockey wives and it was it was it was pretty soapy yeah. um but i i loved my role she she was you know daughter of the captain of the team and uh, she was a ballet dancer so i got to dance a bit in the show and um, I think that probably, you know, was like little taste of it, taste of the film world. And that was, that was, I was pretty green before that. So I learned a lot about how film productions work and just the art of filmmaking. So I would say probably that, yeah. Okay. No, that's, that's great. And that was, uh, again, nice, <clears throat> nice transition. And going back and again viewing kind of the universe's direction is dancer going into uh yeah. cinema and transitioning through dance as that comfort level and expanding from there mm -hmm. um i uh, me personally just again looking and understanding that there are certain hints that the universe is going to drop and uh you need to pay attention to them um uh, a month or so ago, I was doing an interview. I was interviewing um, Lev Gorn uh, from The Americans, uh, who's wonderful, a very serious actor. And you know, knowing kind of uh, in the process of conversation, he said, "Alan, you know what? I have a perfect job for you." I said, "Okay, what is it?" And he said, "You'd be a great producer." Um, you, you know, and he went uh, to list the reasons why. And I've never thought about producing before. And I thought, okay, that's that's really kind of interesting. And then um, three weeks ago, I had somebody who kind of started asking me questions and I started doing some things on a producing. Today, I had a conversation with one of my, you know, former directors uh, who's used me in three of his films. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he wrote and he's directing another series. And now I'm going to be a producer on his series. So the... It's getting into the manifestation, which uh, which I want to touch upon. But mm -hmm. if you stay open, if you keep, like you mentioned, saying yes to the universe and being being available, mm -hmm. uh, and if it is in alignment with the experience that you're supposed to receive, then things naturally happen. Mm -hmm. But you need mm -hmm. to have the courage to let the other stuff go, which you know one of my things that I've done was again letting go of my agent and kind of turning down auditions because I need to you know get more into the core and the focus of this particular time so mm. it's it's interesting how everything flows and again you you 
a lot of courage, right? A few years uh, after what you mentioned, you took uh, another role, which um, you know could have defined your career. Certainly, uh, you probably got a lot of flag for it uh, below her mouth. Mm. Where it was, it was a beautiful. Pro- I haven't seen it. I just you know reading about it and listening to some of the interviews, but mm-hmm. it was a gutsy call to kind of uh, do that type of role because. The the industry likes to uh, put us in buckets, and mm-hmm. um, you know I remember when um, you know blue blue Valentine I believe uh, no blue is the safest color right oh blue, blue is the warmest color yeah warmest color. when mm-hmm. that came out and you know what uh, what Leah and uh, the other actress had to go through it was not easy so. Mm-hmm. You know, for you to go through that uh, through that uh, project just because you were drawn to it artistically, takes mm-hmm. so uh, mm-hmm. I, I commend you for doing that. Did you feel like you got what you wanted out of there in terms of growing as a person and as an artist? Absolutely, yeah. It it um, doing below her mouth was for no one but myself. I. Mm-hmm. I really, you know, I had conversations with my agent about like, you know, what it could do or not do for my career. And, Mm -hmm. but really when I, when I read the script, um, I just had such a visceral reaction to it. It stirred something in me. And, and then I knew I, I just knew that I wanted to do it because Mm -hmm. I hadn't, taken any I hadn't had the opportunity to take any risks like that and that was what I wanted as an actor was the opportunity to really take a risk where I got to transform I got to transform myself into you know some far away part of myself and that and that's what I got with below her mouth and it was just a beautiful experience, you know, all female crew, female director, female producers, just a lovely um, support system. I always felt safe. Um, and I really think that shows in the film because I'm, I'm very proud of the work that I did in it. And I think for me, it solidified my belief in what I could do as an actor. Good. Um, was there a lot of blowback? Did, do you feel that it affected your career in a negative way, uh, in any way, or you feel like it was from just, uh, let's, let's set aside, you know, personal development and growth and ability to really explore aspects of yourself. Um, putting that aside for a second, from a pure career perspective, do you feel that it hindered you? It didn't have an effect. It helped you. What do you think happened after? I really don't know. I really, so true. Yeah. I I really haven't put too much thought in it. You know, I don't mm-hmm. I, I I know a lot of actors and and I commend them and admire them in a way for being able to really consider the moves they make and how it may or may not affect their career, but I I don't have the capacity to think about it. I really don't. I I just because at the end of the day, I feel like it's, um, for me, it feels like my energy is wasted in thinking about if it did affect it, if it didn't. Because for me, the personal um, satisfaction mm-hmm. outweighs that. I think it's an interesting thing, you know, as actors, because it's, it's a tough industry to be in. And it's hard to get work. And so there's a lot of merit and a lot of weight and and self-worth of actors is put into the jobs that they get. You know, so I've worked very hard in my career to kind of take that back mm-hmm. for myself. So I'm, you know, if I feel good about the work I'm doing, that's really what's most important to me. As it should be. Uh, I, I think, again, that's the right approach. Um, I think for me, I, I, I remember um, you know, a friend of mine, somebody that uh, uh, is also from Chicago, and uh, we went, kind of hung out in the same group. 
um, a you know beautiful uh, young woman. Her name is uh, uh, Juliet. Uh, she modeled uh, professionally. Then she went to LA. She started acting. She's very talented. She did a film uh, which was quote unquote risky. And uh, I remember that it's I don't I'm not going to speak for her, but just my my perception is that you know she hasn't done a ton of stuff after that because whatever happened didn't help her career. I thought she was brilliant in it, um, so I thought it would really kind of open things up, and it didn't seem to. So maybe that's where this question is from of having somebody else and seeing that they have done it, how it affected their career. I think it's more from there rather than kind of mm. purely analytical of, well, I'm going to do this role, which will lead to this type of role. Um, you know, as actors, I know that we we need to show our range and we need to show ourselves to uh, to the industry. Otherwise, you know, we're put in a specific box and then we get to play it and maybe, hopefully, you know, God willing. Uh, so we tend to do, you know, some indies and we tend to do some other, uh, you know, projects to allow ourselves to be seen in different light. So mm. um, it's, I, I've never, again, been uh, one that maps things out, but I do definitely think about it. So. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, it's everyone has to do what what feels right for them really at the end of the day right some people they need to do that and that's so valid for me it's the opposite <laughs> for me it's the opposite I have to just be in the moment and be listening to my to, to myself to what I need and again healthier and uh and probably better energetic way because then you made that decision because it was the right decision at that time. And, you know, as time passes, you will never have regrets about, you know, having done something because it was the right thing for you at that time. And that's, mm -hmm. that's probably a much better way of going about it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we had the wonderful opportunity of touring all over when the movie came out and meeting a lot of people that just connected so deeply with the film and that too it's like you know that's that's a reward that you can't you can't put money on you can't put anything on that being able to meet people that you know really said like this this film gave me strength this film gave me strength to come out to my parents or to mm -hmm. you know whatever the story is so that's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, that's it's far more important. And again, when you know what what is life and what do we want out of it? And uh, yeah, if if what you do gives strength and hope and encouragement to somebody else, uh, and it's done in the name of love and light, then you know what else can you ask for? Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Let's touch upon Winona uh, before uh, you know we get to the the spiritual topics that I wanted <laughs> that I wanted sure. to dive back. Sure. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, and again, I apologize sincerely to everybody who knows the show by heart. Um, but you play a role that is unlike who you are as a person. Uh, you play somebody who. And no, no judgment to uh, to Willa, but uh, I think Willa is the character, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, you play somebody who is not a kind, uh, gentle soul who is open and understanding of herself, but you're playing somebody who has had a tough life, who's repressed, who doesn't know how to deal with her emotions, who's angry, who takes it out on other people. Uh, so as an actor getting into a role is i understand that process but what's more interesting for me and where this question is based in a long-winded way of phrasing it is as a person and as a energetic being what does it feel like to be in a different type of uh, energy of somebody who is that repressed or that angry yeah. Uh, what does that feel like? And uh, I have a few follow-ups to, uh, to that. Hmm. That's a good question. I <laughs> it's, it's actually 
quite challenging. I, you know, I, I felt Willa take a bit of a toll on me. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt I did experience a bit of loneliness and feeling a bit um, like left out, you mm -hmm. know, cause she, she is, she is left out. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely went through that. I also, cause she has so much anger and so much rage inside of her. So I, I definitely had some moments where I had to deal with that as well. You know, I had <laughs> some personal outbursts where I kind of went, whoa, wait a second, like that wasn't me, you know? So it, it's, it's interesting how doing characters like this, um, it plays with your psyche. It plays with your psyche. Um, I quite enjoy it. <laughs> I quite enjoy the, um, the exploration of those darker emotions and darker um, states of being and mm -hmm. that someone's gone through that. I, I don't know, maybe it's past life stuff. Maybe it's just, just how I'm built, but I, I do enjoy to explore those darker parts of myself. Yeah. Um, what was your process and, or did you have one for your in Willa, you're in that energy, you're swimming in those uh, waters, vibrational waters. Um, what was your process of removing yourself from them and getting back to core before going back? You know, did you have a ritual? Did you have a, and a, what was your, again, process of snapping back in and letting go and kind of leave, <laughs> leaving all of those uh, energies behind? Well, it was a bit like shooting a movie for me because I, you know, I was only in four episodes, but it was pretty, like she was pretty um, heavily in those episodes. So I was shooting quite a lot. So day to day, um, I don't know that I stepped out too much. You know, it was more just like, okay, change of clothes and back to Natalie, but it was still residually kind of hanging around. Yep. But I always use for a lot of my character prep, I use a lot of music. Mm -hmm. I make um I make playlists for my characters, which I think is maybe the dancer in me. Yeah. I just I find music really powerful. Just so so Willa listened to a lot of really grungy um like darker, melancholy music, uh, a bit of, bit of like harder rock, and you know had like a bit of rage, a bit of emotion, a bit of sadness to mm -hmm. her. So I used that, um, and then when we were done shooting, I just stopped listening to the music. You know, I just stopped listening to the music. I go back to what Natalie likes, and it's, there is, you know, it's, the lines are blurred. Like <laughs> who's Willa, who's Natalie, it's a little bit blurred when you're when you're coming out of it. But you just slowly for me, I just slowly move away, you know. Um it, again, to me it's fascinating on an energetic level because again, talking about auras, talking about uh, you know remaining protected, right? So uh to all sorts of uh, energies and all sorts of things that are around and you know, removing all of that debris and clearing uh, from it and cleansing. And, you know, those those are the things that kind of uh, I I go through and I, in in a, you know, uh, in an honest way, uh, I'm fearful of, of how far do I want to go down that? And do I have the core that will allow me to, uh, to be snapped back and remove all of that other stuff being mm -hmm. Impact and uh, having the, the moment that you were talking about of oh that's not me I yeah. have I know what that feels like yeah um, not enjoyable in in many it's startling yeah yeah so startling. it's interesting um now from again you you the Willa was was not a 
uh, was not a nice character to the beloved characters on the show. So mm -hmm. with an audience who uh, is invested so uh, so heavily into the characters that they love, uh, to get Willa in, um, that part, again, talking about things that bleed, energy is energy. And, yeah. and I'm sure there was, there was lots of negativity, uh, you know, kind of thrown in direction of Willa. Uh, did Natalie as a person and as a, you know, energetic being feel any of that energy? I think when the episodes were first airing, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the, the other actors in the show would live tweet during, during the episode. So I jumped on when my episode started airing and, uh, I, I, I'm just, you know, still to this day, I'm just not big on the Twitter. I, <laughs> I, I find it a lot to keep up with. So yeah. I have to tell you, um, I probably didn't see a lot of it, you know, I, cause, cause I would go, there'd be like, you know, 54 notifications and I'm like, how can I go through all of those? Mm -hmm. So I, I try, you know, um, yeah. but I think anything, I, I think meditation has yeah. really helped me to train myself to, I, I, I just, if I see something negative, I just go right past it. I don't really invest in it. So, Good. yeah. Good. Um, people talk about, you know, as actors, uh, we have to have thick skins. Um, it's a wonderful statement, which doesn't give you the groundwork of how to actually get there. Yeah. Uh, some people are really in the don't give a crap. Um, um, and they just, you know, that's that's who they are. I mm -hmm. am not that. <laughs> I don't imagine you are either. So yeah. for us, it takes meditation and it takes other yeah. practice in order to get to that point. So mm -hmm. bringing us, thankfully, to meditation and manifestation. Um, and what you and Emily were talking about. When did you start meditating uh, and when did it become a part of your regular practice? Well, I started, I got introduced to meditation in, in 2010 when I started therapy mm -hmm. and I started spiritual psychotherapy and my therapist introduced me to some techniques they were more so like guided techniques, visualizations. Um, so I kind of dabbled with that uh, for a couple of years. And then in 2012, I got, I started doing Reiki. So I became attuned in Reiki and started meditating with Reiki and using the energy in that way. And then... Emily has always been a dear friend and she was on this journey with meditation and starting a company. And mm -hmm. so she taught me Vedic meditation, which is what she teaches out of Ziva in New York. And uh, I started doing that in 2013. And that, I, I think I was really on board with meditation before that, mm -hmm. but, but that meditation for me has been, um, it's just become a part of my life. I, I do it every morning, so usually twice a day, but sometimes I miss the second one. But um, yeah, Emily is not listening. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I would tell her the same thing. But um, I, it, it, it's had a profound impact mm -hmm. on, I mean, I was always a you know, pretty stable person, but I had my, I had my issues. You know, and I just feel the practice of meditation has helped me um, to find space around those issues and find a bit of peace within myself. Yeah. Um, again, observing myself at the moment, I, I know where my energy is at right now. It's not balanced. It's uh, like so. Thankfully, I know enough of uh, when to, you know, get myself back into uh, into balance because I know when I'm out and I, I feel that very, very directly. 
Uh, you know, Emily, if uh, if she's watching, is gonna pick up on that right away. But it's meditation. If I don't do it, I feel very different. <laughs> when mm -hmm. I do it, I feel myself. Mm -hmm. Just even now, when I said that, I just got more grounded and I just got more into my own uh, into my own being. It's mm. interesting. So it's I I started doing Tai Chi and Tai Chi was really uh, it worked really well for me. I need mm. to get back into it again, but it worked really well for me because it's that same calming, but it's moving meditation and it taps me into past life experiences because I was definitely, you know, in, in Asia, in China, this was a part of who I was. Mm -hmm. I put on the, uh, you know, the traditional uh, Chinese martial art uh, garment and it feels good. It feels like me. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had that? Like, I know you've mentioned that, you know, you were drawn to, to Russia. There was something there mm -hmm. that, that drew you. Um, have you had that with things that you would pick up or you would just for whatever reason be drawn to it and then you would uh, understand later of why that is and there's just something energetically that's uh, that's there that's tied to your past existences or experiences? Yeah, I've definitely, I mean, nothing that I know for certain, you know, but I've I've definitely thought I'm I'm fa absolutely fascinated by ancient civilizations mm -hmm. you know very specifically Egypt and ancient Greece and mm -hmm. like Atlantis that has always since I was little I've just been absolutely fascinated by really mm -hmm. anything ancient <laughs> so that mm -hmm. to me sometimes I wonder you know what of that if that is some mm. some connection that it's stirring in somewhere deep in my subconscious um mm. and then also indigenous you know like go just indigenous cultures around the world i also very drawn to so i mean nothing for certain but um i definitely feel the pull to those as as an intuitive, I, I, I definitely resonate with that, uh, especially the indigenous. So for me, you know, speaking spiritual, uh, you know, uh, language, uh, I definitely got hits when you were saying indigenous and Egypt. Those two mm -hmm. made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm getting hits that Atlantis is definitely another one. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's... I, I love all of it. And, uh, I remember when my wife, uh, my wife, my daughter, and I were traveling. Uh, this was the first time that I set my foot back onto kind of the former um, former Soviet Union soil. Mm -hmm. uh, after I had left in '89. This was, you know, three years ago. I think we went uh, and we went on a cruise, uh, and we went to Sweden. We went to Berlin. We went to, you know, Copenhagen, uh, and we went to Estonia, and then we went to St. Petersburg, and then we went to Finland. And when we got to Helsinki, pretty much everybody on kind of, you know, you disembark, you have uh, the uh, the tour that you're taking and a bus that drives you around, goes to different places. Like everybody was looking at Helsinki, it's like, there's nothing here uh, compared to Stockholm and compared to, you know, St. Petersburg. Yeah. But I know for, with all of my being, that as soon as I got to Helsinki, it felt like I was home. Hmm. There is that feeling of this is me. Mm -hmm. So I I turned around, I told that to my wife. I said, I don't know. It's just this is that feeling. Mm -hmm. This is me. So I want to go back. We were only there for half a day, which is not enough. But I want to go back to Finland and I want to uh, you know feel more of it for whatever reason it is it just that feels me mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. i i felt the same way the first time i went to estonia my my heritage is part estonian but mm -hmm. i felt that as well when i when i got that my husband's estonian but as soon as i yeah yeah as soon as i was there i 
yeah, a very strong connection. Yeah, Tallinn is beautiful, uh, really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. It was my first time in Estonia. I've been to Latvia and Lithuania when I was a kid, uh, mm -hmm. and I have kind of you know, you know certain memories. But you know, Estonia I saw as an adult, and it's beautiful. I loved it. It is, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, Last few questions, because I, I know I can talk to you for a long time, but we, for our <laughs> listeners, we probably should wrap up. So um, as, as you're kind of looking at yourself uh, right now, if you had to choose, you know, one, two, or three words that define who you are as you see yourself at this present moment, what would those words be? Hmm. Hmm. I would say grounded teacher dreamer. <laughs> yeah. I see I see all of those. I resonate with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, um, you have a lot of beautiful quotes on uh, on your Instagram page. Um, you know, a lot of them are filled with uh, with light. Uh, and inspiration, but if you had to pick one quote, yours or somebody else's, that is guiding you, what would that quote be? Mm. I love quotes. I, I've noticed. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say I have so many, but right now, what has really become a bit of a mantra for me lately um and i think it's relevant for the world right now mm -hmm. is uh water the flowers not the weeds yeah 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 and you just came up with the um with the name for this uh, send, uh segment uh oh. water, water the flowers will be the name for the segment I love that. I love that. I got that from my friend Emily. She shared that in one of her one of her videos. And I just I just felt it was so yeah. yeah, so simple, but it's you know what we put our energy into. Yeah. Gross. So yeah, it was so lovely, Alan. Thank you so much. Likewise. And um Thank you. Uh, thanks for being open. Thank you for being patient with my energy. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It didn't uh, come across like that to me. It it felt like that to me. I'm like, okay, <laughs> calm down, breathe. It's that when when the body uh, is realigning and when you have different attunement that's happening, there's things that kind of needs to just buzz off, and that's what I was feeling. That mm -hmm. thing. To let go, like my energy right now is a lot more calm than mm -hmm. you know it was at the beginning. So, just interesting observing and kind of feeling it and having that resonance. I like it <laughs> anyway. So, thank you, uh, thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you to Universe for bringing uh, this conversation forward. And Absolutely. yeah, and thanks to everybody for uh, for tuning in into another fascinating episode of the Love of Acting. We we know where we start. We never know where we finish. And that's what makes it so special. Thank you. Thank you.